Hey, Jen Banks here. This is the podcast A is for Adversity, and I'm going to talk about being more intentional about our thoughts and our goals so we can make our lives happen instead of letting life happen to us. This is episode number 16, Outlook. You might remember that 16 is an especially important number in my life. A lot of special things happened on the 16th of the month. My sponsor for this episode is The Rustic Touch. And you guys, I love my sponsors so much. I love that I get to start each episode by mentioning them. I love their products and the people themselves. And I'm so happy that they partnered with me for this podcast. The Rustic Touch is offering 25% off any order using the code A is for adversity. Please take advantage of this. You will not regret it. Okay, on to Outlook. I feel like this is one of my most favorite topics of all time. The essence of this podcast is an effort to help you examine your thoughts and the way you're seeing the world. Our brains have created neuropathways for the thoughts that we think constantly. It's almost like a freeway in our minds. Our brains are very practiced at this, and many times we don't even realize that we see the world in a skewed sort of way. Everyone does this, but it's just interesting to take note of. We each have on our own set of rose-colored glasses, and we've all trained ourselves to look for different things, to find evidence for certain beliefs, find proof, and this all leads to the way that we interpret the world. The way we see things is unique to us. My goal with this podcast is to identify thoughts that aren't serving us, see the world in a new way, and reach our goals through empowering thoughts. William Wordsworth said, Your mind is a garden, your thoughts are the seeds. The harvest can be either flowers or weeds. I would say that at different times in our lives, we are looking through a different lens. There are certain things that we're looking for or focusing on, and that changes the way that we act. By marrying my husband, I brought a lot more humor into my life. Remember, what you look for, you find. He has taught me to see humor in more situations than I normally would have otherwise. This is not to say that we should take serious things more lightly, but if we try, we can find a little more humor. Jody Moore often asks herself how she can find humor in the situation. What would make this amusing? Or what could I do to make the situation amusing? A woman she was coaching was dreading seeing her mother-in-law at a nursing home. The mother-in-law would always complain about one thing or another, and Jody challenged her to find humor in the situation. She offered the thought to her, this is amusing. She wondered what she would complain about next, or how she would say it, and sure enough, this was a better thought for the woman who was going to see her mother-in-law. That way she didn't dread it, she could look forward to the visits, and change her outlook a little bit on the situation. Speaking of humor, I remember a teacher in high school once wrote on the board, a woman without her man is nothing, and you can change that sentence just by the use of commas. So of course the man's view would be, a woman without her man is nothing. However, a woman's view would be, a woman without her man is nothing. When you think of a comma, it's just such a little punctuation mark, but it can make a world of difference. This is the same with our lives. Just a small switch can change the whole situation. Think of a theater or a stadium. We see the game from where we're sitting. If we were to change our seat, we would have an entirely different view. What is one way you could change your seat, so to speak, in the life you're living? As a young mom, it's easy to get caught up in the thought, I never get time to myself. However, if we change it to, I have just the right amount of free time this changes everything. We can focus more on our children and being present, and when we do get that free time, we can cherish it and optimize it, or just use it to relax. Most of the time, there is zero upside to complaining. There is a quote that is often attributed to Abraham Lincoln, however, it's by Alphonse Carr, and it says, we can complain because rose bushes have thorns, or rejoice because thorns have roses. It was so hard to narrow down the quotes in this section because there are so many. When I was student teaching in preschool, I did a week on perspective. That was the theme that I chose. In one of the small group activities, we read the book Round Trip by Anne Jonas. This is a fascinating book because once you read it through, you can turn it upside down and read it through again. And it's an entirely different book with the same pictures just turned upside down. 
This also reminds me of those trick pictures where there are two things and as soon as you see the other one, it switches. It's so fascinating. The most common one I can think of is you're looking at a vase and then all of a sudden you see two faces or the profiles of two faces. I guess life is just an optical illusion. Many times we are so caught up in what is happening to us, we neglect to figure out why it's happening for us. There are so many lessons to learn from our lives and from the lives of those around us. I remember on my mission, everything seemed to fall through. That's what I remember anyway. Our appointments fell through, and one day even our hair appointment fell through. (laughs) If plan A didn't work, there are still 25 more letters in the alphabet. My companions and I would challenge ourselves to figure out why we were in a certain area when our plans fell through. Maybe we were there to meet someone else, or to learn a specific lesson. We have such a limited view of our lives. God sees such a bigger picture, and if we're in tune, we can be directed to the reasons we're in a situation or a location at a certain time. Like I said, we're just caught up in worry or busyness or consumed with noise that we don't notice what's going on around us. If we stop and pause and think a moment, we're bound to get more clarity. While preparing for this episode, I was reminded of Nephi in the Book of Mormon when he was commanded to kill Laban. We read in 1 Nephi 4, verses 12-13, through 13, And it came to pass that the Spirit said unto me again, Slay him, for the Lord hath delivered him into thy hands. Behold, the Lord slayeth the wicked to bring forth his righteous purposes. It is better that one man should perish than a nation should dwindle and perish in unbelief. So very profound. God's ways are not our ways, and his thoughts are not our thoughts. Your Weekly Wisdom is by Douglas Clegg. The happiest of people don't necessarily have the best of everything. They just make the most of everything that comes their way. Thank you so much for listening to this podcast. Please leave a review wherever you listen to podcasts and share this with as many people as you come in contact with. Talk to you next week.